it's a long story, so I don't even know <laughs> where to start. But um, so I sold my home to start my business. I'm living with my parents still. The real estate market went crazy, so I'm still trying to figure out housing situation. But I was living at home with my with my parents, and my brother Chandler was living there as well. He's a he's a marine. Um, he just got uh, back from deployment from a, from a four year deployment, and um. You know, one night we, uh, we heard a knock at the door. My sister heard a knock at the door at one in the morning and, and, and Chandler answered the door, went out and he was gone for about 20 minutes. And then he comes back in and my sister had went into the front room to wait for him to come back in. And my sister was like, what, you know, who's that? And my Ch- my brother Chandler just kind of blew it off. He's like, ah, there's no one. And my sister's like, okay, whatever. And so she went back to sleep. And that was the last time anyone had ever seen him. And there was a lot of mystery around that. We didn't know what the heck that was for quite a while. And um, and so the very next morning, this was, uh, I can't remember the exact dates, but it was around the 19th, 20th of December. And the very next morning, um, Chandler uh, was gone. He We thought he went to work. And from that point, until we found out that he had passed away was about four or five days. Yeah, well, because we, we found out on Christmas. But Yeah, I was going to say, I knew it was right around Yeah, around Christmas. You. But, um, you know, we, so after he after we found out that he called in sick to work um, and for the following day, um, and then we followed up with that, and then they're like, well, he, he's a no-show the, the day after he called in sick. So we, got, we started to worry. Um, and... You know, we put some information out on social media about his his car, his license plate, you know, what he looked like. And, and someone said, well, we just saw him, you know, a couple of days ago. And he was out on a, a dirt road out in the middle of nowhere. We stopped and asked if we needed help. He said he was fine. And so we sent search and rescue out into that area. And that's where they discovered his body, um, out, on a, out, out on a mountain where he used to like to go hunting. But... um so anyways, that's, that's kind of the story of what happened to Chandler. But, you know, months went by. We had no idea what that knock was. That was really bugging me. And I remember, do you know Brandon Armstrong? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know yeah, him. Yeah. So me and him talked a lot, and I was, because his, his son passed away. And, uh, and I was expressing to Brandon my concerns about all these mysteries. I'm like, who was that knock? Who, you know, who knocked on the door? Where did he go? Why did he do this, this, and this? And and it's kind of a side tangent, but I remember Brandon, so he stuck out my mind. Brandon said something along the lines of, don't worry about the unknown questions. It'll eat you alive. You know, just focus on what you know about him. And I thought that was, that was some really good advice. But um, anyways, to, you know, to fast forward a little bit to what we know now. Um, and I, I don't want to say a whole lot because there's still another party involved. We've never obviously talked to this other person or anything, but Chandler was seeing a girl. Um, you know, one thing led to another. They, they had, uh, an intimate relationship. She later claimed that he had molested her sexually and the cops were the one that knocked on the door and they wanted to get evidence from his car. And, they were both under the influence of something at the time that this happened. And so it makes me so mad and I try to not focus on this because my brother's a cop and, and so he kind of knows how things work. And, and we've heard from multiple sources that nothing probably would have come about with this case. No, no charges probably would have been made or anything. They were just following due, their due diligence and stuff. But because, you know, they, there was enough evidence there that they were both, uh, they both had agreed attention to this relationship. They were both under the influence of something. And, um, but Chandler didn't know that he, the cops came and he was scared out of his mind. And so he didn't want to be, I guess he didn't, well, who would want to, but he didn't want that to get out. And so it's frustrating. Um, I, you know, it's one of those things where, you wish he would have said something. I wish I would have came, to, gone to him had I known, but you know, I don't know. It is what it is, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it is frustrating. So what Brandon was talking about with you. So, um, I've told the story on here a handful of times, but for the people that are tuning in that don't know my background, 
uh, my dad committed suicide a few years back and he had drove his car off of Webb Hill and the, the search and rescue guy that found him so that like repelled down the hill and found his body. We, my dad and I actually home taught his family when they oh, moved wow. into Washington. So we, I've known him forever. forever yeah. Right. Like yeah. I watched their kids grow up everything. And, uh, and I know that he, you know, struggled handling it as well, but so he repelled down and he kind of talked about, um, or I don't, I don't know if he actually told us anyway, the information had got out that my dad had drone off, drove off. And when he hit it, tossed like threw his body out of the car. Hmm. And then he was there for, it was like, it was a week, it was Memorial day weekend. And they found him. I'm, they're thinking it was a day or two and they might have all this figured out now, but right, at the time, right. at the I, time, yeah, that we're pretty sure we don't know if he died on impact, I guess is what I'm getting at. Right. Um, and my brother, Jason and I, after the whole thing happened and we found out it was him and they found his body and he's dead and you know, and everything, Jason and I spent like the next three nights together. Like we had friends all coming over and hanging out and yeah. he'd come over to the house and everyone was just kind of just, you know, just being there for both of us. Right. 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 And, uh, when everyone would leave, Jason and I would sit there and talk and, you know, luckily for me, I, I don't know if luckily is the right word, but for me, I had kind of dealt with not ever talking or seeing my dad again, yeah, yeah. you know, I'd kind of, I'd almost like grieved him in my own for, yeah. In my own relationship with him. Right, right. Right. And so when I'd sit there and talk to Jason, he would be like, dude, do you think he laid there like alive for a day? Or do you think that, and he'd, he'd go through all these scenarios like you're saying. Yeah. And yeah. I just told him like, dude, it, figure out the best scenario that you can come up with for him and, and believe that. that's what yeah. it is. And that's because no one will ever know. Yep. You won't know. Yeah. I've had those same thoughts because I've, I've heard, you know, I kind of went into this crazy suicide information journey, just yeah. reading about everything about it after Chandler passed. And I read, I, it's been a while now, but I read a, a statistic where most people that attempt suicide don't want to, don't want to follow through with it. And so, you know, my brother, he did it with a gun and me and my family members have had conversation where do you think he actually meant to pull the trigger? Was it a hair trigger and he didn't mean to actually pull it? You know, yeah. I don't know. And I've had the same thoughts, you know, how long did it, was it instant? Was it, so I don't know. I, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been, it's been a crazy journey to, um, I don't know, to go from point A of, you know, all these things stick out in your memory of, well, that was the last time I talked to him. Why didn't I actually talk to him? And, and I've mentioned this on Facebook and stuff too. We had a Christmas party and I threw a, a local Christmas party in, in Enterprise and, and I invited Chandler to come. And Chandler was kind of, uh, looking back now, I can tell that he was distancing himself from our family for these reasons or whatever. And I invited him because I knew he probably wouldn't come and he did come. And I remember looking across the the big room full of people. I'm like, oh, Chandler came. He actually drove my wife and kids over and I saw him over there. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to go say hi to him. But I was busy setting up some things. So I didn't go over. And next thing I know, he had taken off. You know, he went to go do what he does. I don't know. He was such a closed off person. But that was the last time I saw him and I... And I was so mad at myself for the longest time for not just walking over there and being like, hey, thanks for coming. But it is what it is. I mean, you can't change right. the past. And you got to, like I said, you got to focus on the good. But yeah, Well, and I think sharing the story of, of both of us, right? Like, yeah. I think that's the impact of it. I think that's what yeah. you can do. Right. Um, think of the next person that hears this and they're in the situation like that. And they're busy setting up tables for a yep. dinner yep. and they see someone walk in. Yep. It's like, okay, now you need to stop and go listen say to, hi to yeah, them. Yeah, listen to your gut feeling, that still small voice, whatever you want to call it, but just go do it. And it's it's frustrating because it's not a talked about topic, suicide in general. It's, I mean, you know, you've, you've gone through it in your family and I think it's getting better. But, you know, I've been on, I've, you know, I've talked about it with 
other podcast things and stuff, but it's just one of those things where people don't talk about. It's such a hush hush thing, like the word suicide. It's, it's such a taboo topic, but. Well, my struggle with it is, and you're, you might have great input on this because you have kids, right? Um, so selfishly, and I've always been super open on the podcast, but selfishly, I, I, had, when my dad was alive and I kind of never planned on talking to him again, uh, I had nieces and nephews that knew him. Right. And I always thought like, man, when the time comes that I have a kid, like, how am I going to navigate him not knowing his grandpa, but his cousins do. And, right. and so again, selfishly, like when he did take his own life, it was a, there was a part of me that was like, well, I won't have to ever explain this to my kid now, right. you know, of why right. he doesn't know him. Right. Um, and at my dad's funeral, to my knowledge, um, there were people that didn't want the suicide and the depression and all that talked about. Um, my brother who stepped in to help with the funeral kind of said like, Hey, if we're going to be a part, if I'm going to be a part of it and we're going to be a part of it, cause my dad was remarried. Um, like this needs to be talked about, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. So, but so here's my question to you, man, like your kids knew him. Right. I mean, they saw him every day. Yeah. Every day. Yep. And so how, how do you navigate that? Cause I think that, and <laughs> I, I just, I'd love to hear your input because I think even with my kid, um, you know, I mean, William's almost three now, at what point is su does the suicide topic come up? I know. Has it already <laughs> come up? No. How do you, you know what I mean? Like, no, and that's why I'm hypocritical because I'm like, ah, we're not talking about it. But right. I, I don't tell my kids that. And I don't know, me and my wife have had a lot of long, hard conversations about that very thing. Um, cause my, my oldest is, he'll be nine, um, in a month or two. And, and the story we've told him is, well, he got in an accident on this. He knows we've driven to that mountain where he, where we found him, but, but I, I think my oldest is getting smarter cause the family talks about it sure. a little bit around, you know, and, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And maybe some of your listeners can give some input because, um, it's a tough topic. I mean, how do you tell little kids that? someone took their life purposely. Um, well, cause I don't even want that to be a thought no, in my exactly, son's head. Right. Exactly. But at the same time, it's like, well, you need to know that these things happen. And if it, you get to this place, you need to have, you these, need to talk to us. Yeah. yeah you need, need to be, have a yeah. plan B. Right. Exactly. And that's, and that's exactly where I struggle too, as a parent of younger kids. And I, I don't know, for me, we've, me and my wife have kind of decided, you know, when we feel that their mind is a little more mature enough to have that conversation. I don't know if that's 12, 13, I don't know, but it's, but it, on the other side of that coin, it's scary because, um, my, you know, my sister that lives over in hurricane, she was telling me just a few months ago about a, I think it's a 14 or 15 year old boy that committed suicide in that, in that area here locally. And so I don't know. I mean, you don't want to, like you said, you don't want to push that topic off, you know, sweep it under the rug until, they get to a point where it's too late, but. 